What's up people? I'm doing a quick video on the Kiesler Automation Drop Spindles and um, why you'd want to use them and what I'm doing to accommodate them in my Miata here. Uh, so here are the spindles. I have them set up here next to a set of the factory ones and I'm going to point out some of the differences. So the first thing that you'll probably notice is these are fancy billet stuff. You know, aesthetics, that's what you always see first. But anyway, um, because it's aluminum and the design of them, they are lighter, so you save some unsprung weight, which is nice. But there are other reasons beyond that that make these really kind of desirable. And I'm gonna get into that now. The next thing is kind of in the name of them, it's a drop spindle. I'll show you what that means. You can see that the tie rod points are at the level of the table. The lower ball joint mounts are also at the table level. Upper ball joint mounts, those are all you know, basically the same height relative to one another between the Kiesler spindle and the factory one. But there's one big difference. The location of the hub is substantially higher on the Kiesler one. And that difference is about an inch and a half. And the reason you'd want to do this is you could get a lower ride height without affecting your suspension geometry so much. And uh, the two things that this is correcting for by adjusting the position of this up is uh, the roll center and also bump steer. Bump steer is when you hit a bump and the car kind of steers due to the suspension geometry or issues with it. You can kind of feel your steering wheel jerk when you hit a bump and it's a little bit unnerving and it's not great for the stability of the car. The other thing is the roll center. And that's basically how the angles of your control arms interact with the contact patch of the tire. And um, those all together kind of create an axis that points towards the center of your car where the load from lateral forces is directed. And uh, one way to think about that is if you, well, I guess I'll start with what that influence is. It dictates how your car rolls that has geometric roll stiffness as a function with the roll center relative to the center of gravity of the car. If you have a long roll axis, which is the difference in height between your center of gravity and your roll center, um, the car will have more propensity to roll when you're turning. So in theory, if your roll center and your um, center of gravity are in the same location, your car isn't going to roll at all when you go around turns. That tends to not be a great condition because you'll end up with a vehicle that's kind of difficult to drive. And there might be other issues too, but it, vehicles tend to be designed with some roll access so that you get some roll through turns. It's not a bad thing as long as it's controlled and in the right amount. Uh, the thing though is when you lower the car, your roll center tends to go down which gives you a longer roll axis, and that gives you additional roll. You lose your geometric roll stiffness as the car gets lower. So to compensate with that, you'd have to use stiffer springs, stiffer anti-roll bars, that type of thing. And you're taking independence and the capacity for movement away from your suspension. So by having that unfavorable roll center condition, the long roll couple, it, um, it kind of hinders your suspension's ability to work. So this can adjust for that. So you can have the roll centers closer to where they were designed to be from the factory while still have, having a lower ride height. Uh, other things that this does, it adds some camber, negative camber. So, you know, it's made for track setups typically. So if you have a track car, you want to run a fair bit of negative camber. This has some built into it. And then the last thing that I'll mention is the um the wheel hubs that's mainly why i chose to do this you can see that this um factory miata wheel hub it's really thin here and this is an oem one so it doesn't have some of the design faults of some of the aftermarket ones like if you went to autozone and buy bought some other oem replacement unit it would have some machining operations that make the transition from this flange to this barrel here um, not so ideal, so you kind of get stress risers and concentrations through this. Here it's kind of rounded, so it's not as bad, 
but it's a common failure in Miatas for these hubs to kind of shear. This flange just comes off, and when this comes off, your wheel goes flying, and this stays with the car. And as you can imagine, if you lose a wheel while on track, you know, usually it's under heavy cornering load when it would occur, is that this can be loaded up. Um, you could end up with a situation where you could very easily crash the car, cause injury to yourself, damage things. No good comes of a wheel just falling off and ejecting itself. Uh, let's contrast that to these MR2 hubs here. This is a really beefy flange. There's a lot more meat here than there is there, so you end up with something that's more robust. Another reason to do this is this is a sealed bearing assembly. They tend to provide better longevity and function over time. Um, these were kind of problematic, or they can be, in that you have to take them apart, repack them with higher quality lube to make them hold up to track abuse and so on, and still they can kind of wear out fast. Personally, I've had pretty decent luck with these, just doing track days and so on, but I know like even a lot of spec Miata people have these bearings wear out real quick, so they have to get the Mazda Speed Motorsport ones, repack them, or whatever into just playing games to try to get some more longevity. With these, I don't have personal experience with them yet, but based on the differences in the design, I anticipate that they will last longer, be less prone to failure, and just have a longer service life. So those are all the great things about these. One thing to be aware of though, if you do choose to run these, is you'll have to make some changes to your other suspension components. And basically the reason being because you're moving this up, your um, coilovers for a given ride height will be closer towards full droop. So you lose droop travel and you gain bump travel, but not like in a useful way. Basically your wheel will just bottom out on the inner wheel arch before you run out of compression travel. Then ideally when compressing, you don't bottom out your wheels on your wheel arches. You want to use up your compression travel in the damper and hit the bump stop. And then that kind of damps out that force. So there are two things that you could do potentially to get around this. The more expensive option is custom coilovers. The alternate that I'm choosing, the more frugal option, is to modify your um, mounts. So if you take these and lower them, I'm lowering them about an inch, inch and a quarter. I haven't decided yet, but what I'm going to do is take a hole saw, put it in my drill press here, clamp these down and cut out the center section of this. Cut out the inner three and a half inches and then I can take some of this pipe, cut it down, drop it in there and I can extend these so that, you know, if this is bolted into the shock mount, in the car, the point where the control or the coilover actually mounts will be down here because there's this extension here that I've welded in that'll lower this point about an inch. Uh, the reason I don't want to go much more than an inch is because the motion ratio of the car, uh, every inch and a half or inch that the wheel in a Miata moves, the compression of the coilover. I think it's like 0.7 inches or something. I forget what the actual motion ratio is. But basically, um, movement here creates a disproportionately small movement there. So because this moves an inch and a half, I don't need to move this pickup point a full inch and a half. It can be less, and I'll still have something that's essentially the same as what the car came with from the factory. So I might go a little bit further because even with the factory geometry, you can see some rubbing in the inner wheel arches, like hitting there a little bit. Not too bad, but I do kind of want to engage these bump stops sooner than I have because there have been a number of instances in this car where I hit certain bumps or whatever, and then it just lays the chassis out on the ground. And that's bad for a variety of reasons, but if I lower the pickup point for these a little bit more, I can have it engage the bump stop, and that way my chassis should stay off the road under all but the most extreme of conditions. So anyway, I'll get to modifying those, and I probably won't show the process, but 
Once I'm done, I'll show you how it looks and how it goes together. And that'll be fun. Back on the voiceover to give a little bit more context. Uh, these drop spindles are available for the rear as well. I only did the front at this point because the rears are back ordered. However, once they come off of back order, I will be ordering some and repeating this process for the rear. I've done one track day now since installing them in the fronts, and I've got to say I'm pretty happy with them. It did correct a lot of the bumpster that I'd been experiencing previously, and also you can tell that the front of the car is kind of um, flatter through turns as you'd expect it to be with more geometric roll stiffness. It does kind of understeer more because the front of the vehicle is handling more of the lateral load transfer, but once I get the rears done too, I think that problem will go away and the vehicle will once again be neutral. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with these things. Looking forward to getting the rears on and uh, probably won't give an update for that, but uh, if anything noteworthy happens, I will.